This is a video review of RVI Brakes Command Center, which is a smart RV tablet and hub, plus the add-on Tire Patrol, which has four sensors. The Command Center functions as the display unit for several of RVI Brakes products, including the RVI Brake 3 towed braking system, as well as the Tire Patrol Tire Pressure Monitoring System, or TPMS. It also includes a leveler function as well as possible future product additions. I talked to the folks at RVI Brake, and one thing they did mention is they don't want to clutter the screen with too much information. And while they would not divulge what new products were in development, I did get the idea that more products are coming. I first became aware of RVI Brake when I had a motorhome, and I owned a RVI Brake 2 towed vehicle braking system. I now have a fifth wheel, so while I no longer need the braking system, I will be installing the TPMS on my unit. For more information on RVI and RVI Brake and Tire Patrol and all the rest of their products, go to rvibrake.com. While RVI Brake 3 is RVI's flagship product, we're not going to be reviewing that because we have a fifth wheel and we have no need for a towed vehicle braking system. However, the system is flexible enough that the command center and tire patrol can be used by itself without the RVI Brake 3. But if you have a motorhome and are interested in the RVI Brake 3, then check that out at their website as well. And you can also go to my website at rv-project.com where you can obtain more details about this product as well as the other project videos that I have produced. So let's take a look at what we have inside this box. We have USB cables, uh, instructions, looks like a USB charger, it's another USB charger, and here is a tablet. And this is the hub. It looks like a mounting base. Ah, it's magnetic. There we go. How about that? And then with the tire patrol. And again we have manual. And I'm liking this already. Look at this. They have the right front, left front, right rear, and left rear already labeled. And when I talked to the factory, they told me that these are lightweight enough that they work on rubber stems. And in fact, they're sealed units. And instead of replacing the batteries, uh, they have an exchange program where you just send the whole unit in and they'll replace them. RVI told me that the sensors go to sleep when they're removed from the tire. That is, when they do not detect tire pressure. If the sensors are removed during storage, the battery should last at least three years. But if left on the tires, about two years. The sensors cost about $15 each to replace, but remember if you have a different brand sensor, you got to buy a battery anyway. So then that reduces the cost differential. Plus you're getting new sensors every two to three years, which will help the reliability of the system. So that's something you'll have to take into account when you consider the total cost of ownership. This system runs on 916 megahertz, where most of these systems run on 433 some of the competitors and the issue is that with 433 megahertz you are limited to the power you can have because the FCC regulates it pretty strictly so you need a repeater and these I'm told do not require a repeater because they can transmit more power so they don't need the repeater. And this system actually consists of two products. One is the hub here and the display unit here, which is called the command center. And the other one called tire patrol are the four sensors. And this is the dashboard tablet that fits into the dashboard of the vehicle. And the first step is to turn that on. And it looks like there's a little push button here. And let's turn it this way so we can read it better. Looks like it's Android based. Okay, so now it's found the hub automatically. First thing it wants you to do is to pair the sensors. And I do know that the sensors have to have air pressure behind them to wake up. And I'm not really reading the instructions as I do this. I'm just going to try it as it is because I, I'm trying to hold 
the instructions in one hand and the tablet in one hand and the sensors in the other hand and manage the camera in my fourth hand. So let's see how we do. An installation is just a matter of going to each tire and putting this on the Schrader valve and you're done. So it found all four, it says done, and I'm a genius. And now it looks like we have to put some information in. So let's get started. Choose the desired pressure for low pressure, the desired pressure for high pressure. Give you a guide that under the low pressure, maybe 5 to 10 psi lower. High pressure, 15 to 20 psi higher. And fifth wheel, a low pressure warning. I'm just going to make them 73 for now. So 73 low, 90 high. And that's what it looks like. Hopefully you're seeing this in the camera okay. Also shows temperature. 53 degrees. It's a cold day today. Tire pressure, signal strength. We have one that's a little bit lower. Okay, so now let's see what else we have. We have RV level. If we take our puck here. And command center shows the battery repaired. Here we go, calibrate the RV level. Travel checklist, getting ready for takeoff. Oh, that's kind of cute. You can make your own list. And setting up camp, and then breaking down camp. But yeah, I mean, uh, it looks kind of cool to start with. And I kind of like the leveling part, because as you're going to the RV park, sometimes if the spot that you park in is not well defined, if it's just a grassy area, sometimes you can move, you know, left to the right or forward or reverse a little bit and get better level. And hopefully this will kind of help with that. So I kind of like that aspect of it. I just got one of these little uh, generic holders that will hold these little two inch hole devices and this happens to be uh, both for an accessory outlet and a USB output. And when I turn it on and I'm looking at my power supply, it's drawing about 10 milliampers and that's mostly for the light. So even when the thing is on standby, this light will draw some current and ideally in a boondocking situation or in storage situations, you know, we want to get rid of any of that residual current. And even though 10 milliampers doesn't seem much, and it isn't, you get three or four of these things, a few other devices, pretty soon you're actually talking about something significant. And I'm going to replace that with this Quick Charge 3 outlet. And if I turn the power on, a little blue backlight, which I really can care less, and it has the same 0.1 milliampere discharge, so we're going to put a switch in the other side of this. So I'm going to be installing this switch that comes in its own little bezel. We want to remove both of these. It's a shame that you can't just buy this without everything else because we're just going to sort of throw it away one way or the other. So now we'll have a switched USB. If you have a motorhome, you may want to take the hub and mount it horizontally. But in my fifth wheel, I'm going to be mounting it vertically like this, instead of this way. And there is an arrow that shows where you have to point up. And you can see the magnet right there that I put in. And that simply fits on the magnet. And since the hub needs to be powered from a different project, I installed a little 12 volt distribution system. And this is a USB charging port we just built. This is the operational test of our new RVI brake tire patrol. A couple of nice things that we have is a travel checklist, RV level. We're actually level uh, pretty much and we're on the truck right now so we're off the leveling so we're on just level ground. But we'll use this when we get to the camp to find out where the level spot is. So finally, it's a low battery because we're charging it. And we gave 78 pounds and 77 pounds. And when I filled them the other day, I filled them to 80. But, you know, they're a pound off because no two air gauges are identical. So that's probably close enough. If we wanted to do any setting changes, here's where we are set for 73 
pounds as a low warning and 90 pounds as a high warning, that's probably okay to start with. Well, we've been driving now for about a half hour and it uh, looks like temperatures have stabilized. Uh, and I went in there and actually changed the high pressure limit, 20% over and 15% under. And then once we get to the site, we can go to the RV level and we can see how level we are. We just back up or go forward a little bit until this is as close to level as possible and that tells us we'll have an easier time trying to level the rig. And one of the things that I do like to do before we leave is to recalibrate the leveler and that is here. It's actually off a little bit now so we'll come back here and go to settings and then command center then RV level calibrate. Now this does say the RV level has been calibrated at the factory for optimal performance. Recommended you do not recalibrate the level unless instructed by RVI technical support. Well when I talked to the factory they said go ahead and do it if you need to. So we'll calibrate it. And there's two methods. Number one is if you have the hub horizontal on a flat surface you would lay it on a flat surface, hit OK, turn it 180 degrees and hit OK and then you're done. However that does not work if you vertically mounted the hub like I have and to do that you go to the calibrate procedure hit OK the first time do not rotate the hub leave it in the same orientation and then OK again and then when we're done with that, we can go back to the RV level and we can see now that it's calibrated to the current position of the RV. I also custom built this holder in my truck that fits into the center console tray and this is a magnet here and I can adjust it like that and I can quickly turn the orientation if I need to. I will detail this in another video. And the other option, of course, is to use a beanbag with a magnet that came with the unit. And I also recommend that you use the USB hub that it came with. I actually try to use my USB port in the truck, but it does not put out enough current. So this port was not keeping up with the discharge of the tablet, and it would keep shutting off. So use the one they give you. And remember, in the first part of the video, I said that this system is going to be expandable. And here is a new offering from RVI Brake that expands the system. And it is a towed battery charger. And whether you have a fifth wheel travel trailer or a towed vehicle, you can use this charger to monitor the battery level as you're going down the road. And actually the vehicle's alternator will charge the battery by itself as long as it's connected. But this just provides a method of isolation between your alternator and what you're towing. And this video is getting a little bit long, so I'm going to cut it off now. And we'll do this installation in another video.